Hello everyone, this is Karen and this is going to be a Q&A video in the dark. So, a couple of days ago I asked you if you had any questions for me and uh, you replied. Now, there are two main groups of questions. One was made on Instagram and the other on DeviantArt. So, I am going to start with the Instagram ones just because they don't need an introduction. While um, the DeviantArt ones may need a little bit of introduction because uh, some people don't know what I do on DeviantArt and I kind of have to explain to give you context. So, let's start with the questions. Also, I will add the name of the person who asked the questions somewhere on the video. So, if you were one of those who asked me something, you can just uh, scroll through the video and uh, when your name appears, there's your question or your answer. <laughs> okay, let's start with Instagram. Uh, oh, hardest question first. <laughs> what is your favorite food and how do you make it? Okay, I am going to be definitely stereotypical here. I love pasta. I'm Italian, I love pasta. <laughs> Fact. Um, my favorite pasta is definitely a matriciana, which is, uh, it has a base of tomato sauce, then you add guanciale and uh, it's a little bit spicy. I don't like it too spicy, but uh, it's a personal preference of mine. And also I do it without onions. I don't know why some people add onions. I don't think the recipe has them, but... you No. I like onions. I love onions, just not in there. Uh, second one is pizza. But you could have guessed it. What are your other hobbies besides art? Hard. I do like watching movies and uh, watching TV series. Um, I also like reading, and in particular, I love reading for fiction. It is an addiction I've had since I was 12, and uh, I never stopped. Um, the thing is, when you buy a book, you don't really know that you're going to like it. Of course, there are reviews, but with a fan fiction, you already know what you're looking for, and uh, for the most part, uh, you are already choosing your genre, your characters, the kind of overall setting of your fan fiction. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to dislike a fan fiction where I was very disappointed in a lot of books I read. So. I stuck with what works. Then, uh, did you go to any art-related school or are you a homegrown artist? I'm a very organic carrot. Uh, I had uh, a couple of uh, art classes in middle school, but they were like, okay, this is the technique, here's how it works, uh, do a piece with them and then just move to the next uh, to the next technique and this was done for one uh, hour each week for about one year and then we just kind of switched to um, art history which is not exactly art and um, eh, yes but not what I really liked I really enjoyed playing with uh, like acrylics uh, uh, we never tried oils, but uh, pencils and watercolor as well. But uh, art history, not so much. Uh, favorite type of music, if you listen to any as you draw or paint. I do love music, I love music very, very much, and my um, current favorite, it has been for about uh, five or six years, is uh, um, the epic music you you can listen to while watching trailers, so epical, I, I don't know if it's a genre, but uh, that kind of music I really really like. Also I like very uh, rhythmic music, so like uh, reggaeton for me <laughs> is a drug, because uh, you can be kind of safe that you're always listening to the same thing over and over again, if the, even if the song changes a little bit, the bass is the same, so Awesome. How 
However, I don't listen to music while I paint. I actually listen to... Uh... <laughs> okay, this is going to sound very odd. I listen to makeup tutorials. I'm not a makeup person. I really... You can see it from my face. I don't wear makeup at all. Also, I kind of find it interesting that you would need a concealer with a full coverage foundation. What's the point? Um, but yeah, uh, I kind of specifically search for um, makeup artists that have a cadence. So, <laughs> like with music, also with people, when people speak, I look for a certain cadence. And so, I find them kind of relaxing, kind of a drawn in the background. So. I'm not really listening to what they tell me, but it's like it's like music. It would be the same thing as listening to music. I wouldn't listen to it, but it would be like in the back of my mind. Um, then favorite movies and favorite books. Hard. Um, if I had to pick a favorite movie, it would probably be The Fall by Tarsem Singh. It has a wonderful photography and uh, I really enjoy the story as well. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out because it's really great. Then favorite book, it's kind of hard because uh, a lot of the books I've read just uh, date back to my teenage years. I haven't read an actual book in a long time. Um, no, I actually read like a Ujo from Stephen King uh, about a year ago. Um, if I had to pick one series that I really enjoyed, well, it was the Harry Potter series, so I'm just going to say that and uh, pick that as my favorite book. Okay, so um, this is it for Instagram and now let's uh, introduce the DeviantArt questions. So, um, you may not know this I also have a DeviantArt account, however, what I do on uh, YouTube and on Instagram and what I do on DeviantArt <laughs> couldn't be different, couldn't be more different. Um, I do like art, I enjoy all types of art, but for the past uh, 10 years or so I have been a digital artist only. So when I started uh, with watercolors I wanted to like separate the digital part of what I did and the traditional part. So I started with Instagram and YouTube for my watercolors to have a separate kind of social for what I do. My DeviantArt account I actually have two. One is the main one and it's very old and very abandoned because it was mainly about fan art and like bleach Naruto fan art. I was like very very into manga and anime, still am, but I did draw a lot of them. But right now and for seven years ongoing I have had an account for adoptables. <laughs> now I'm going to explain what adoptables are in like the most condensed version I possibly can. Um, an adaptable is basically a concept that uh, uh, you are not keeping for yourself but you're selling someone. It's, uh, it could be as finished or as unfinished concept as you would like and it can be really anything. I have written a series of articles on uh, what are adaptables and uh, how you can make one, sell one, whatever. I am going to link the first one in the description box below if you are interested in basically what they are. But uh, just to uh, give you an example, maybe you draw a girl character who's an archer and uh, has, I don't know, magical power and you draw this character. only. You have no idea what to do with it, you are not interested in keeping it, so you put it up for sale and you say, okay, whoever wants it can get it. And someone, somewhere, oh, me, 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 me. Okay, there you go, this is the character, it's going to be yours um, for a certain price. 
go ahead, play with it, do whatever. This is basically the, the concept uh, of an adoptable. And uh, I have been doing adoptables for seven years now, and uh, I was one of the first people jumping on the bandwagon of original species. So basically, a species that does not exist in uh, a real life that has been designed uh, by you mm, and you kind of own it. Something like that. Uh, I'm not going to go into details because if not it's going to get very very long. But uh, along with the uh, um, original species I also do variations on the themes, so clothing, weapons, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, um, the questions from DeviantArt uh, uh, rely heavily on uh, uh, knowing what adoptables are, so I wanted to explain so you could, like, <laughs> understand the question. Okay, let's jump right in. What are your favorite themes and colors used in your adults? Okay, so, uh, two questions mainly. I'm going to start with the colors because it's the easiest one. I really like the uh, gold, black and white color scheme because uh, I think it's very elegant, very simple and uh, also striking as well. So it's something that really hits you. Also, a lot of monochromatic, uh, desaturated colors work uh, fine. So white and gray or black and gray, those kind of uh, associations are one of my favorites because I find them very elegant. Some brighter colors, I do them as well, doesn't mean that I really like them, so I'm more for muted colors. Favorite themes? <sighs> Don't have a favorite theme, but I do enjoy everything that glows. I, I'm a woman. So anything that glows is fine for me. So anything gold, silver, or like uh, starry accents, uh, sparkling things, um, like uh, not uh, the total design has to be sparkling. But if you add a little bit of sparkles, uh, it's uh, it's fine. Also for my um, for my fashion, I really like uh, fantasy themed. Uh, um, designs, so something along that way. Is there a favorite style of clothing that you just love playing around with? <laughs> uh, okay, I kind of already answered. I really, really like uh, fantasy designs, but also I have a soft spot for Indian designs. I find them very, very elegant. I, I really love them. Uh, this doesn't mean they're very easy to design, they're kind of hard, which is one of the reasons why I don't do them as much, because I really struggle to make one as beautiful as I want, and, uh, and so I kind of just give up halfway and it turns into something else. So Sometimes you get what you want and sometimes you don't. What can you do? Um, I left the hardest question for last because I want to explain a little bit. Um, the question is, uh, what advice do you have for aspiring artists, uh, aspiring adoptable artists, on how to build a fan base? How do you get yourself out there and start it all? Now, I did already do an article on starting to make adoptables, but uh, uh, it's always worth explaining. To start, you just have to start. <laughs> just you just have to um, to put effort in what you're doing and be prepared for failure. It's like the hope for the best and prepare for the worst kind of thing. You need to uh, have a lot of backup plans. You need to have a lot of plans. Um, you need to be convinced of what you want to do and then. Like Nike says, just do it. Um, really, starting out is not that hard as it seems, and uh, um, really, it's just a matter of deciding to start. Now, um, after deciding to start, which is the easy part, <laughs> comes the hard part. So, um, 
preparing your designs and be consistent with them. So here we come for the um, we come to the advice for aspiring artists on how to build a fun base. Um, I think that my style kind of changed throughout the years. It has become more um, more sure about certain parts of anatomy. I feel like I have evolved. But the thing is, what makes uh, like uh, uh, my account consistent is what I draw. It's not like uh, finding your style, having a consistent style. It helps, but it's not fundamental. The fundamental thing is to have like uh, a certain kind of designs that you stick to and uh, you stick to for like longer than just a couple of months. So, um, for example, if you um, I don't know if you really like uh, feral designs, so creatures, animals. Of course, you can uh, change between the animals, but you kind of have to be consistent. And if you build watchers, which are followers basically. If you build up uh, watchers for what you are drawing, you need to be consistent about it. So you will need to give them what they liked throughout uh, the months slash years. It doesn't mean that you cannot change the subject of what you do, but you need to be gradual in introduction um, in the introduction of a new uh, of a new design. And uh, it also means that you cannot uh, stop doing what you're doing. So it is basically a matter of uh, consistency. You need to be consistent in your posting, kind of frequent in your posting. Like you cannot post one design a week. It has to be more frequent than that. So you need to like plan your designing hours around this. You need to be. Uh, more frequent in your postings and you also need to be consistent in what you are putting out so if you decide you want to start with like you can start with a lot of things so maybe you are interested in human designs uh, and then uh, fashion designs you can do both at the same time but you cannot like six months after you started your account stop everything and turn to, to animals and then just stop doing what you do because you have um, you have people following you that are interested in what you are what you have been doing so far so um, once a person looks at your gallery uh, you of course need to submit your your adoptables to groups to you need to advertise kind of a little bit, but people will come to you. If you're doing adoptable, chances are that people are going to come to your page and look at what they see. If they like what they see, they're going to stay, but they're going to stay because of what they have seen so far. If uh, at some point you decide that you want to change completely your mind, you are going to lose a lot of people and a lot of interest because you are kind of subverting uh, like their stable ground. Um, example, I was on the um, original species, species bandwagon for I think three or four years before I started with my fashion designs and uh, let me be honest, uh, in the beginning fashion designs were like very very easy to sell. They went like right away. So the um like you would have liked a lot to just make fashion, fashion, fashion one after the other and just forget about what you did before. But uh, you kind of need to think in the long run if it's going to hurt you or not. You, you have like uh, you have a shop, and you have people that come to your shop because they like what you're selling. If 
you stop selling that thing and just move to a completely different uh, uh, item, of course people are going to be like perplexed. They're going to wait a little bit to see if you kind of uh, wake up from your craze and if you don't, they're not going to follow you anymore because they think, okay, they, ju they just move on, moved on and that's it. And you will need to build up your audience back again with people who are interested in your new item. Not a good idea. So um, instead, what you would want to do is uh, to um, slowly introduce your new item. So, okay, I post. Uh, if before I posted three times a week and I posted like two people and uh, one clothing, then how about you just add a fourth posting for one or two months just to see what, what happens. And then slowly you substitute maybe one of the human designs for the animal design. So you're going to keep the same uh, workload as you had before, but you have more variety and you're also drawing what you want. Very important thing, you need to choose <laughs> to draw things you like. Because you're not going to be able to keep on delivering the same quality with the same rhythm if it's not something you like. This is something that is really a suggestion that could work for anything. You need to be passionate about your work so you can keep on doing it even if it goes bad, even if it's not successful. You need to keep on doing it because uh, there is a saying, I think it exists also in English, but I have no idea how you say it. In Italian it's chi la la vince, which basically is uh, um, those who hold on win the battle, basically. Um, no, there is no battle, but those who endure win. And mm, uh, like, it's to juice. So, uh, to be able to endure what you're doing, you need to like it at least a little bit. So, here we come to another part, another suggestion. People notice if you put effort in certain things, they can see that you are trying to um, to make something beautiful, that you're, tr you're trying to make something um, w worthy of their attention. If you just put out designs just for the sake of, oh yes, I just want to sell stuff, people in the beginning will will be a little confused but they will still like follow you but sooner or later either they are going to realize that you don't really like what you're doing or you're going to realize that you don't really like what you're doing and so you will need to get out uh, of that situation and it will it will not be easy so um i think i've already talked uh, far too much <laughs> but Basically, this is the um, this is the advice that I have uh, for adoptable artists to build audience. That's it. So, uh, thank you for being with me. If you have other questions, just uh, leave them in the comments below. I will probably do another Q and A um, like request video in the future around Christmas, maybe. I have no idea, but still, if you have any questions, just leave them down below and uh, I will just uh, take them all and uh, store them for the next video. As always, <laughs> thank you for being with me and until next time.